Galatians chapter 5. Now we've been talking for the last quite 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 the last quite a while on the subject no fear not here fear go somewhere else but not here say no fear here and this is the 11th message in that series we hopefully will complete it very soon and we know that God has not given us a spirit of fear it's a spirit of love power and a sound mind that's what he's given us power love and a sound mind the Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 1, that we are redeemed from fear. But it also tells us that fear is, fear is not only a spirit, but it's a bondage. God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear, but he's given us a spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Um, Romans 8, verse 15, and so on. Now, as much as we are redeemed from fear, the same way we are from sickness and disease, it doesn't mean that fear, the devil, is just said, oh, they're redeemed from fear. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm not going to try to bring fear in their lives. They're redeemed from sickness. I'm not going to try to put sickness on them. They're redeemed from poverty. I'm going to go and let, just let them prosper. No, because you are redeemed from is the authority that you have to demand what's yours. Amen? Amen? So, but the enemy is still the devil. He still comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And even though you, res you are redeemed from fear, if you don't know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge, the enemy will still bring fear in your life. And one of the things that we've come to conclude is that there are four doorways that fear comes through. Which is when you're trusting in the arm of flesh, when you are, when you are believing according to the way things appear rather than seeing by faith, when you are allowing the information that comes from your, from your five physical senses to, to invoke fear on your emotions. And then number four is this issue of imagery, where the devil can plant image, images in your mind and create strongholds and imaginations and high things that are not, that exalt themselves above the word of God. And next thing you know, you're in fear. So we won't be, we've been talking about how to close those four doors. Amen. All right, so, and today we're talking, uh, is the second part of the fourth door, which has to do with imagery. But let's back up to Galatians chapter 5, and, and let me say a few things. Galatians 5, chapter 5, and verse 16 says, This I say, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which basically means you will not be fulfilled or be consumed or be moved by and under the control of the passions, the desires, the cravings that is coming from the flesh nature. Amen? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which is basically, and this is a bit of a recap, to walk in the spirit is to walk, you are spirit, soul, and body. To walk in the spirit is to walk after your born again spirit. Amen? Walk after your born again spirit. Which is to say, if you're going to walk after your born again spirit and walk in line with your born again spirit, you've got to walk according to the laws that govern your spirit. You've got to walk according to the nature of that new man. And the nature of that new man is love, is righteousness, is holiness, because it says in Ephesians 4, 24, that this new man is created in righteousness and true holiness. He has the very nature of God. The love of God is shed abroad in his heart. And the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, etc. So to walk after the laws that govern this new man is to walk in, in, in these characteristics, in these principles, in, in what the new man is made up of. Righteousness, the fruits of the Spirit, love, and so on. So to, that's, so to walk in the Spirit is to walk after the new man. And if you do, what, what it is, is that fear will have no rule over you. Fear will not have any dominion in your life if you walk after the Spirit. Why is that? Because to walk after the Spirit is to walk in righteousness. And the Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 14, In righteousness shall they be what? Established, anchored. And they will be far from oppression. Why? Because they shall not fear. So when you establish in righteousness, fear has no access. And as a result, oppression is chopped off. Similarly, it says in 1 John 4 18, that perfect love drives out fear it flushes it out and again to walk in your spirit after the law of your spirit is to walk in love amen so automatically just by walking after the new man and walking in the spirit you will find yourself free from fear 
Hence, Romans 8 verse 2 says, the law of the Spirit. Now, I know we speak about the Holy Ghost and the, you know, the Holy Spirit and big S versus small s. But here is the same word. The law that governs your spirit, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ. What, what, how does it work? What does it produce? The law of the Spirit of life in Christ makes you free from what? The law of sin and death to which fear is connected. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. So where there is that Lordship flowing through your spirit, dominating your life, liberty is the result. No fear. Say no fear here. I'm not going to play with it. Now, but uh, let me continue reading here. It says in verse, verse 16, Walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth, or war it, the Amplified says, against the spirit. In other words, it's, trying to, it's opposing your spirit. And this is your born again spirit. And your spirit against the flesh. It's opposing your flesh. And these two are contrary one to another. So that you can't do the things that you would. And then it says, But if you be led by the spirit, you're not under the law. All right, let's come back to that one. So there is this war between your spirit and your flesh, so to speak. So let's stop for a minute and find out what are we talking about when we talk flesh. Because sometimes when we think flesh, we just think flesh. <laughs> Amen? And flesh includes flesh. But flesh is more than flesh. Does that make sense? So let's just talk just a tiny little bit about that. And you could go study it out. There is the physical body, thank you. There is the physical body which is subject to natural conditions of life, this physical body. And as a result, carnality will affect it. There is, uh, and, and, um, and, this, and, and the senses, the senses will dictate, to, will dictate and will cause reasoning, logic, what the world thinks, to, 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 to have an influence. There 